Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Indira Ghosh from JNU and today we are going to talk on the module of scoring function under the paper computational biology. Here the learning objectives are once you dock the molecules or you are docking the molecules, what would be your criteria to find that you are using properly rotated or properly selecting compounds. Also how to efficiently predict that binding efficiency of the molecules. So we will discuss why they are used, what are they and how to derive to use for this use. I talk about the relation of IC50 and KI with the scoring function. Why? Because scoring function actually expected to represent at least IC50 or KI in their relationships. Now, there is a simple relationship actually related as shown in this slide and, uh, and that is a function which is shown. So, KI has a kind of relation with IC50 which is having moderated or modulated by the KM of the reaction. So, KI is not independent of KM of the reaction. Just remember that not only that KI also depends on what concentration one uses the, uh, the, the subst substrate so that you calculate the values. Whereas IC50 most often are just 50% concentration at which the, the, the inhibition is, is activities is inhibited at 50%. So, the concentration depicted as IC50 whereas Ki is a constant independent of the concentration values. However, representation of IC50 normally is used in logarithmic scale which is shown in the following equation that is PIC50 and it is equal to minus log IC50. So, lower is a better inhibitor hence PIC50 will be like higher and higher values. So, if we have compounds which are nanomolar binding efficiency, they are almost quite a good compound. But the excellent compound will be which binds concentration will be PM or, or picomolar. And compounds which are binding at the level of micromolar are really not so good, which might show many of the interactions. We actually need the scoring functions for two purpose. One, which should be able to distinguish the experimental correct binding mode from all other possible binding modes. Also, during the whole search algorithm of docking, also we need some scoring function which should be very exhaustive or certain ways it should be um, very, very much dependent on the binding energy so that it can predict which compounds which has been better binder than the less binders. So, we require two types of scoring function. Here I am discussing all about the three different type of group of scoring functions I have been aware of. Most importantly, the one of them is exhaustive energy function which is derived from molecular modeling force field like amber, OPLS, charm, etc. Another is empirical free energy that is derived from already known different uh, empirical functions empirically like PMFs, like PLPs. These are force fields which is derived from well known different kind like all the protein database derived some phi function which is converted and they are empirical force field. We will come to those and discuss when we go to the P type scores. However, there is a third one which is actually one has seen the hydrogen bond energy or hydrophilic phobic interaction etc. by experimental knowledge. Based on these values one can also derive and those are called knowledge based functions like Bohm's scoring function. Such three different characteristics is will describe how one derives one of at least one of them number one also we'll discuss about how they function across different proteins and their compound ranking here i am describing the two utilities one is full scoring system 
as I described earlier also, which is protein ligand conformation finding. Second is a reduced function, which is used during uh, very quickly ranking the systems. Hence, uh, we should be uh, looking into both features and possibly the common most uh, one which can serve both purpose would be better to use it. What are the basic limitations for calculation of the scoring function or deriving the scoring function? One is it really does not look for very much expensive terms like electrostatics. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. Also, only considers hydrogen bond interaction energy, not the directionality so much. Also, it only calculates the high energy surface. That is not the preferable one, but what is to be removed on hard sphere concept. It totally neglects solvent effect, also it neglects ions and also it neglects as no penalty. Basically, this is the worst limitation and that is for omitting some interaction. So, what we mean by this is that several different compounds when they are docked at the active site, they might have more opportunity to bind. Like there could be four hydrogen bond donor and the compound might have two hydrogen bond acceptor. Hence, we lose some and for that, no penalty is given. This kind of uh, limitation makes the scoring function development very difficult. Now, uh, as I described many times, potential energy surface or the force field which we are using here for scoring can be exclusive force field like calculated by atom atom wise interaction like uh, amber force field or charm force field and cvf and other force fields however one uh, uh, can as well use uh, something like a different type of force field and those cannot be exact atom atom interactions these are most often are used in scoring force fields in scoring function force field actually uses something like potential mean force field, chem score, sometimes it uses linear potentials developed by different methods which I will discuss about how to develop them in the later part. However, most important is all these force field must represent actually the experimental data that is we should be able to recover from this force field the rank or scoring appropriately so that compounds already known to be having good binding efficiency should be portrayed as a good binder from the plots. There are different ways to score your ligand and that's important. The generic scoring function can take care of many of the interactions and that could be ligand binding to receptor should be equivalent or equal to the loss because of solvent, loss of energy or because from vacuum to ligand goes to the solvent, then the interaction between the, uh, the ligand which when it is with the conformation which is restricted conformation, receptors energy also is counted to be counted and then how many conformers in free solution the, the ligand can have minus the T delta S, which is values for the vacuum. However, one should be looking into knowledge-based potentials, as I said, maybe from derived from potentials like statistics or something. Regression-based potential, which is, which I said, which is derived from knowledge information, but did with already well-known values and then did the regression. Also, equation based which are like uh, standard uh, known uh, data and then you just derive from it. A detailed paper on 1998 by Tudor Priya is prescribed to be gone through. However, point of uh, arguments is some of these, that least few of them, how to derive we will discuss and we will go through the good and bad of how the scoring function behaves. Next uh, slide shows you exactly one of these problems. That is, it has been found when it was used from the reference paper, the actual prediction which is on the y-axis and the model predicted on the bottom that is x-axis, the compounds which are highly 
effective and very good compounds are predicted rather quite a large amount of error and the compounds which are middle predicted that is they are mostly in micromolar or, or maybe early nanomolar they are predicted very good. So, so this and even the compounds which are badly predicted that is they are not binding very well they are predicted even worse. So this is one of the problems this is one plot which only shows one type of molecule that HIV compounds only. Next plot shows us actually collecting the data. So next slide will show you by color coded. Now, if you look at the errors predicting binding uh, uh, affinity by a method called validate and paper is published in shown here, actual prediction that is actually what I uh, uh, shown it on the on the on the x axis and the prediction is what we did. You can always very well see the ones which is uh, uh, higher than 2 log unit errors they are predicted it badly poorly rather they are in, in shown in red color and they are coming in the lower value that means they are poor binder whereas the middle ones which are between uh, 1 to 2 log units they are shown in in the color black and they are coming in between that is the middle range that is they are mild binder and better binders that is in the blue colors they are coming almost correlation high correlation so they are coming within less than one log unit uh, error what it shows is actually very good binders or higher than middle binders can be predicted well but poor binders actually are not predicted so good so uh, 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 designing molecules we must remember that uh, major compounds if we want to model we have to be little careful hence deriving from this knowledge the scoring function must be uh, monitored in such aspects of better binders and weak binders. As we see from our previous slides, there is a difference between the weak binder and the tight binder. Most often the weak binder which is between micromolar to millimolar affinity, they are predicted with a more errors than the active ones, that is the very good ones. However, most often what is been seen, weak binders always are over predicted. So, there is high chances that actually the, it will not bind, but you predict it by scoring functions, it is a low value. And tight binder, which are actually very good binder, are under predicted. That is, they are predicted as if their values would be nanomolar to micromolar. This causes very difficult scenario to evaluate any scoring function for that matter and designing compound based on these might turn out to be a very difficult scenario. Hence, we have to look into this and we have to understand why that happening. The reason for not doing this correctly is because we do not penalize for weak binders and for tight binders do not get any positive cooperativity in, in the scoring function equations. These are the two reasons both sides are loser. Here we are just discussing how every component of uh, different uh, contributory files or contributory uh, interactions and, uh, do towards the scoring functions. Most often as I show you here and it, this has been derived as earlier paper we discussed is from protein bound to receptors and the ligand bound to crystal structures. Hence what noticeably is most often the lipophilicity contributes the maximum to the scoring sites or scoring functions. Then comes steric energy hindrance basically not the better fitting and uh, polar CSA etc do make very good. However, these rotatable bonds and, and conformational enthalpy also contributes quite a lot in that model. This has been derived from a PC model or 6 uh, PCA type models from the interaction energies which has been earlier discussed about. I reconfirm to all of you about how much really the values which I have shown earlier, the how we have derived it. Here is a simple explanation of done by in-house that is 
45 known ligand receptors. Out of them, we derive the equation something like this, which is equation 2 says, where one can estimate the energy of every component if that agrees or, 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 or it, if it contributes positively or negatively. And delta 0 is the constant in the figure formula while uh, fitting the many equations with, with that coefficient. However, we have assumed it to be nonlinear properties neglected. That is the most important part that we should have included dependency on the nonlinearity. We assumed it all the interaction are linearly related and that stops a, a lot of other interactions. However, and also it is applicable only to competitive binder. Correlation between the experimentally determined free energy and the predicted by docking. One can calculate by previous equations these values. And as you see, we have chosen very recent literature and three very well popular, I would call, uh, softwares, which are one is Autodoc, which is shown on the top and on the left. What it shows is the same tendency that with the scoring functions that the lowest binding free energies or the lower binding free energy compounds are falling outside its correlation functions. Similarly, we see the other way around gold score where also the same phenomena has been observed and with FlexX the same problem has been seen and this particular paper, which is referred a few papers in the bottom, they all has been consulted to have these plots. It is important to note when we do the scoring, there could be some outlier. However, we should be able to say within what limit our boundary or boundary of our work, the scoring function used, they fall or not. Here it has been shown in three different case study or three different programs how the scoring functions are behaving. How one derives scoring function? What we can do is we can show you how to derive an empirically derived scoring function which has been in, in this paper written about. The important factors is the accuracy towards designing. Means we should not make a designing, design a scoring function which will not give much accurate. Applicability, that is it should across the chemistry and affinity, lowest to highest, we should be able to apply robustness. If we take from one conformer to another conformer or we take the, the program from one type of scoring function works in one protein and not the others, we will be losing out. Then the fifth function is very important. The fourth one is speed. It should be quickly done. Another is the scoring functions must have some physical interpretation. And that's so that we can design analog. Chem score is one of such which has been used to design using 82 complex for training set and 30 tests complex using the protein where uh, protein database proteins and uh, accelerate software was used for ionization, active site, everything has been done properly and used 10 angstrom full interaction energy place and a little bit tether energy, etc., etc., so that the whole regression is done, interaction energy calculation is complete. Not only that, the equations which will be set up has good regression ability how we got the scoring function. Now, as I have described earlier slides, here also I am showing you every function separately and what are their meaning. I think we can read it out from the slide that hydrogen bond DGHB is derived from the delta R, which is a deviation from any hydrogen bond should be. That means 1.85 is the standard distance from hydrogen to oxygen or nitrogen, which is the hydrogen bond acceptor. However, distance di difference is what is counted here. Also, the angle has been included. Now, the case like uh, others, like it has been used G1 delta R and G2 delta R, etc. And that is meant to have the values for the different functions, like whether it has a steric hindrance or not. And those functions are shown in the right side picture. So, there is a sharp potential boundary well. So, it is a straightforward well, which is not a smooth well, 
has been considered as steric conditions. Rotational functions has used in a very different way so that rotatable bonds are exclusively can be counted on, which is, is, is very important and shown by H rot function. Hence, and the, the F function, which is a, a, which is R1, R2, R2 and all, that is been for the lipophilicity. Very few cases such a exorbitant empirical functions have been calculated. See, part of it is calculated from the interaction energies and part of it from no well-known functions. So, scheme score calculation was done based on this. This is called empirical scoring function. So, derivation of empirical scoring functions. However, there are a lot of limitation even in this design. And that is most of the scoring functions are average contribution. So, actually some interaction may be more predominant than others and it does not take care of that way. It also assumes always the binding mode of the molecule or ligand in the receptor is exactly the same even if you use any different pose. Hence, it becomes a bit difficult if you have a different, different conformation or different pose of the same conformation binds to the active site. And there are like experimental pH which has been included in this uh, chem score. However, it's imp not imp explicitly but implicitly. Then terms like strain energy where the molecule enters under, then if it does not bind, which I have said earlier, no penalty for that. And then another situation is how much it has done with the virtual screening and not known to design compound uh, scoring function and not cannot be included in the scoring functions. However, there are a lot of limitation even in this design and that is most of the scoring functions are average contribution. So, actually some interaction may be more predominant than others and it does not take care of that way. It also assumes always the binding mode of the molecule or ligand in the receptor is exactly the same even if you use any different pose. Hence, it becomes difficult if you have a different conformation or different pose of the same conformation binds to the active site. And there are like experimental pH which has been included in this uh, chem score. However, it's imp not imp explicitly but implicitly. Then, terms like strain energy where the molecule enters under then if it does not bind, which I have said earlier, no penalty for that. And then another situation is how much it has done with the virtual screening and not known to design compound uh, scoring function and not cannot be included in the scoring functions. There are several methods as I have said and here I show you multiple docking scoring functions like PMF which is derived from protein bound with ligands, crystal structure. Kunz published papers on DOC that is another quality score where interaction mapping has been done and energy conversion has been done for this docking scoring. There are Willett, Peter Willett's group who has actually used G-score and these scores are also uh, uh, not directly derived from the protein and, and ligand interaction. However, from the property of chemicals, this has been derived. So, these few methods would be discussed how they fare if we take the crystal structure and bound ligand who, for whom we know that what should be the expected uh, experimental value of, of functions and if we compare all these ranking function how they manage will be shown in next two slides. However, here I show you most of them while calculation one does something shown in this picture that is on the right hand side and that is grids are done to calculate this quickly the scoring function and uh, uh, such a, a scoring function evaluation takes very small time because millions of compounds mostly one does through virtual high throughput screening work. Uh, we must also understand that, that this should be uh, different different uh, cases like you can generate very accurately some of this geometry of molecules. Sometimes we can have single ligand uh, detail information is that required and sometimes we need to uh, rank many compounds in using such methods.
here I'll show you three different scoring functions. One is P score, which is derived actually from PDB. That is, no empirical fitting has been done. Here, only the interaction between to the receptor and the ligand has been utilized. And some correction has been done because of the presence of water molecule or space, etc. On the other hand, uses explicit function D score, which is used mostly in docking. It is an explicit energy function. This is derived from like an amber force field. Hence, we have to look at these functions also calculate not continuous, but it puts a grid across the molecular active site and calculates these energies. On the other hand, is a scoring function where pairwise and angle dependent hydrogen bond energies have been done. These are knowledge based. Hence, I have shown you three different set of one knowledge based, one derived from empirically from the protein data bank interactions, known interactions, and third, another one is the explicit energy calculation. These three different kind of scoring function, how they perform, will be shown in next few slides. Here I show you uh, actual results of using different scoring functions as I have been depicted in previous slides. And these are cyan color shows, cyan color column shows the experimental values and the crystal structures of one protein thermolysine which is a metalloprotease bound to many inhibitors. And if you look at these inhibitors, different inhibitors, but the scoring functions are shown for different different methods. So, here it is very interesting if you observe that it tells you the best to nearest to the experimental values are those which are shown in yellow color. Whereas that is within 2 kilocalories. Whereas greater than 5 or 5 kilocalories away from the experimental values are on the red colors and uh, the rest of them are not uh, really worth to look in. However, please do note that Different programs, scoring functions, gives different kind of accuracy. So, in looking at thermolysin, you would come to conclusion, maybe P-score is the best way to do it, which is PMF, which is derived from crystal structure. And, and, and you can see that the most bold colors are shown, which is nearest to the experimental. The next slide shows about the same type of plot, but taken HIV protease. Here you can see more fair score is done by gold score and uh, it is very interesting. So it gives you an understanding that not one scoring function does play the dominant role to rank. It actually tells you the other way around story that is depending on what are the criteria you have chosen for the chemical which you are doing the high throughput screening or the protein active site properties. The scoring function may do good or perform better or worse. Hence, it is all advisable either to come up with a consensus scoring function, which I will talk later on, but better to do at least score by few molecules, few different uh, procedures and come with a, some kind of ranking rather than filtering. As we have seen earlier study that not a single scoring function consistently gives the best rank compounds and not even it scores the best rank as energetically favorable either nor it scores in the same protein. Hence, if we compare uh, between different proteins and different structures or different inhibitors or compounds, we might get different uh, voting. Hence, Better to do instead of only scoring function and deliver and the delta G or free energy is much better to use something called votes. And that concept has been implemented in future for consensus scoring function. And this consensus scoring is not a scoring function, but it is actually votes, which using this concept that votes, we can actually rank compounds accordingly. So, obvious reason, votes would be if it lies within the top 50%, then the votes will be preferable. Sometimes we give maximum votes as 4 for all scoring function contain that particular solution as the top 50%. 3 votes if 3 scoring function. One way of doing this measure 
and this many good many scoring function should ap- appropriately uh, select the best favorable energy obviously however the energy differences might change in different ways depending on what type of scoring function we are using here we are discussing about if we use the same scoring function or c score which we said consensus scoring element not function but words and rank compounds with compounds which binds to different protein now this is where difficulty comes that is along with this four figures one has to look into the detail of this paper which worked out really good analysis by bob clark from tripos and uh, that time at that point of time that is early 2002 and jv matthews from pfizer extensive comparison of different proteins different inhibitors with different binding affinity has been portrayed here so this is a very heavy duty slide i would just bring to your notice that in case of hiv protease seems to be it is scoring if we score by two methods one is best third and best half then we see the most of this good compound or well binding compounds in fkbp as well as in hiv protease are doing fairly well however they are not so good in thermolysing or in sequelin synthesis so as we have been sorting functions as a decreasing affinity by your x axis and x axis shows these numbers are crystal structure available in crystal graphy with different ligand however the same enzyme what it tells us not necessarily even even ranking are consistently same for different proteins so one can do something little more and that's what has been suggested that we can have rank sum that is the sum of the rank of most predictable configurations which scored the lowest in each scoring system or we can have worst best rank which is statistical people most often use that is sum of the ranks but throw away the best and the worst now we can do this c scoring for both of that positions in the whole quantiles also we can do rank correlation coefficient actually we can calculate even rank correlation coefficient given by these values here we show using all these functions and the c scores how much it is sensitive to the protein active site and other nature what we noticed if we look at the table here shown then you would notice the bold ones are the best or the best ones which scoring has been done almost similar nearest to the that is the rank pearman rank coefficient nearest to the crystal structure now hiv protease c score did the best whereas in thermolysis the g score did the best and uh, uh, sequelin synthesis score did best however in fkpb different binding base g score did best this becomes very difficult once more even using this complicated rank correlation to decide which functions to choose so one has plotted here with respect to one compound binding to one active site however many many conformers so mopa has been docked into thrombin using flexx and one software one compound one active site but scored by very many different scores and chosen 30 configuration that is how many different poses this molecule can have has been explored here what we notice simple rank sum which is shown in the first can do corresponding sum scoring functions worst and best also however c scores does much better in the region where the rmsd with respect to the active crystal structure is lower which gives us more confidence that even if we use c score is still relevant to use uh, such a cases so this shows irrespective of conformers c scores picks up better pose than others let us look at how it happens when we do a little more that is depending on the protein active site and there also this is a compound which hardly have any chance of flexibility still using flexx and we do the uh, scoring what we notice is once more c score gives us the better amnesty with all these uh, structural features and conformer different conformers we come to certain conclusion that 
see score might be the wise idea as well as rank a correlation function can be used to guide us for proper scoring things however there are many cases where none of these would be really relevant or or will become very irrelevant while getting different kind of data and that's what i am depicting in next slide here i show you not only here for another few that false positive this occurs due to the uncertainties in crystal structure unfavorable interactions and you know maybe some favorable interaction is there but still some unfavorable interactions occurs and it occurs most often when you have a conformer or small molecule which is very small compared to the active site so active site space can offer many interactions and the poses can be satisfying several different thing one of these is depicted in this this particular picture and you can see conformer 12 and versus 24 the same molecule different pose different interaction is very difficult to identify which one should be the correct one uh now i'll talk about uh, that sometimes in the protein structures and the compound which is docked there could be a possibility of alternative docking and which is uh, shown in the two case studies the first one shows that we have a naphthalene binding to thrombin and the 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 orange color is what we got from using flexx docking and which is highly stable and very good uh, binding however the crystal structure shows a, which is shown by color coded by the molecules and a little black on the carbons and if you look at that the interaction is possibly crystal structure interaction now this crystal structure and the uh, if we uh, calculate the rmsd between these two is almost greater than 5 angstrom so however that structure with the crystal structure as well as the structure which we have uh, shown here or the paper refers to both have highly stable interaction satisfying all of them now this is interesting because in some cases experimentally found binding coefficient might differ if there is a opportunity of alternative docking another case study has been done by the next slide shows to you and that is on different proteins called neuraminidases this also have a large active site and dna which is a small molecule which binds you can see the binding uh, of rmsd between two molecules crystal structure shown in black and uh, uh, red and green blue depicting the molecule and the orange color shows the 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 docking structure this might yield in a different way or different alternative docking sometimes one has to be very carefully to filter out this alternative docking and and most cases it is much preferable to retain this alternative docking because this shows you a potential molecule designing so this is the space where new molecules can be designed as we have seen it is very important that we can have a validation of scoring so there could be opportunities of different conformer different poses and when it comes to comparison between one active site to another active site it becomes even more difficult hence we should be stable docking conformer should rank always better than the unstable docking now a scoring function which scores the crystal structure conformer has to be very important because this will not differentiate between poorly and well docked ligand and then uh, it becomes difficult so sometimes we have both crystal structure and the ligand conformer and sometimes we do not have both so it might be different because of this crystal structure ligand conformer to differentiate between the poor and the uh, well docked ligand however one has to remember that same compounds can bound to the same active site in different only one single pose however when we are docking compounds of different kind diverse chemicals poses can vary very much hence reproducing the crystal structure pose and trying to keep that over there is not the correct solution however each of these scoring function brings something distinctive and ensembles of these should be the better to look at hence one should never do one scoring function should score by many scoring function it is unlikely that all the scoring function could be wrong for one system 
probably it is better to use many scoring function and it will help the dots on that. However, still there would be available some caveats. In this slide, I am actually telling you what are the all caveats of such functions. Of course, the different of different scoring function will have different fitness. And some of the scoring function would be very good for ranking and screening. And some of them may perform better when we do the energy ticks. Now, the most of the uh, scoring function are, are independent of docking method. Most of the scoring function should be. But there are some which are better in ratio valid of hits to false positives and some are not so good. Most often, that's why one tries to use the scoring function like C-score, which is not really scoring function, but we give by voting system. But C-score actually failed very miserably when it was distinctly tested with thermolysin. Actually, what happens, thermolysin has a metal binding site and that is functionally important. Hence, somewhere this protein active site is influencing and not allowing the evaluate very successfully all the points. So, sometimes docking is determined by the conformers of the molecule, sometimes by appropriate poses, sometimes due to the availability of many possibility of interactions but satisfying only a few and sometimes due to some specific active site. So, fall positive is a very common case. However, most often what we have seen is false negatives are generally low. So, coming to most of the conclusion. So, what we come to conclude at least one that is C-score orders protein complexes independent of the docking procedure at least and it orders properly at least the lower binder or very strong binder versus the weak binders which is very important. It is also useful for alternate binding mode because it just gives you the opportunity of exploiting many new interactions for medicinal chemist. Scoring function towards the docking actually in the flexible active site can have this problem even using C-score. So, chem-score or other knowledge-based functions should be used also for ranking. I have uh, uh, described you oh, earlier all the possibilities of scoring function, how to derive them and, and how is the good and bad of the ugly of the scoring function. However, one has to very much remember the numerical measures like Rubin square deviation or, 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 the, or the pose or the different alternate binding etc. This to be very carefully interpreted may probably build you new interaction a new measure of interactions. Hence, uh, one has to be carefully uh, not only do scoring and automate the scoring functions, but also visually inspect this. So that one can build really new molecule, new test molecule and, and, and those test molecule might uh, perform much better than, than the others. So, one has to be careful on few points that Scoring functions do give a direction and hints towards which are the molecules will never bind. However, scoring function cannot eliminate the chance or probability of same compound binding in different poses. So, one has to be very carefully interpret in calculating interaction maps, not just filter out by scoring functions. Thank you.